walk into their area that they would come to you? Yeah, so he comes to me and um, our birds don't come to us because they love us or anything no. like that. In fact, our birds are with him since he came to our program and if I died right now, he probably wouldn't care. Um, but he, uh, our birds, when we train with them, they learn to establish a level of trust with the handlers so they uh, recognize the handlers to some extent and know that they're not going to hurt them uh, or do anything bad to them. Unless, of course, you grab them for restraint and things like that and you do scary things to them. Then they learn that you're a scary person. They learn to avoid you. But I'm very close with him and I give him food and he knows I give him food and that uh, he has a it's a good time with me, and um, when he sees me, he recognizes that I have food for him, so he will usually come up. So um, our relationship is uh, has some level of trust in there. It's not a love relationship. It's a very one-sided love relationship. I love him a lot, but he doesn't care about me. Um, but he does recognize me and trust that I won't hurt him. So usually when he does see me, he will come up to me. It's a lot lighter on the front. You have more like streaking uh, down the front and belly. And his heart, his pants, or his uh, leg feathers, I call them pants, but his pants actually have little heart shapes on them. It's very cute. Um, but this past summer, he molded all those feathers, and you're in his new adult feathers, which is what he looks like now, and he'll look like this for the rest of his life. Get a seat. There you go, buddy. Very excited about you. So making that sound, is there any reason they make that sound? Or is he a happy bird? Or the clicking noise or the peeping? Oh, he's just a particularly chatty bird. Whenever I'm working with him, I think he's looking for food or maybe he just yeah. got a lot to say. I'm not really sure. Yeah. So that's the that's the broadwing scream though. If you hear that in the wild, that's the broadwing hawk. So you have a two-tone whistling call. That is called a camera. See something? What do you see? He's reading the sign. Super blend. All right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really looking. Yeah. What Super are you doing, blend. Darling? Chipmunks. <laughs> He's looking for the chipmunk variety. No, this is where I find the chipmunks. I understand. <laughs> I guess he could do a chipmunk pretty easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He's pretty. He's pretty ferocious for such a tiny bird. <laughs> now this is a. A broad-winged hawk. Broad -winged. Okay, broad-winged. You might see somebody out the window. Sometimes he gets spooked by people outside. He's distracted. Right? You're forgiven for not recognizing him. I know. Exactly, yeah. She has a wing injury. You see that the one wing hangs a bit lower than the other. And she really, we often say she can't fly very well, but it's much more accurate to actually say she can't fly at all. Which is tons where you draw the line on what is flying and what's not. But she can sort of hop and flap to help herself hop, but she can't really gain any of that. Well, you can, you can definitely see it. Uh, yeah, you can see it's the injury is to the shoulder there. It just has not healed up properly. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, she's a, a bit of a grounded bird, but she has been a, a great addition to our program as an education bird, and gives people a great opportunity to see a species we don't tend to get to see in some of those birds. Yeah, I think they're especially down for birds, and you can see how that the color and pattern would really help her in the Arctic tundra, where it's all rock and snow and ice very well. So she would blend in really well up there in the tundra. The tree vines, so they're all north of where there are trees, way up in the proper tundra. In the winter, they will move a little bit further south, but not much usually. Most of them still stay quite a ways north uh, in what we would call, either in the tundra, they'll stay way all the way up the tundra, or what we would call the taiga, which is like the northern border of forest. Um, so even places like so Thunder Bay well would be coming right, south for them. Um, but very occasionally an individual will come all the way south to Southern Ontario. For whatever reason, Ottawa area seems to be the spot in Southern Ontario for deer falcons, but they get maybe one or two in the winter. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. A little bit of a spray as well. Yeah. For sure. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Oh, really cool. <laughs> so Ellesmere is an Arctic bird. She's a bird that's built to be in a cold place all year round. And so to help her stay cool in a nice warm store like this one, she can give her a little shower. And she actually really seems to like it as well. So yeah. it's kind of a win-win because she has a good time. Sometimes she'll toss her head and kind of bathe or she'll drink water. And so she kind of seems to like the shower and so keeps her cool and it's also nice. Water. What is that? <laughs> really cool.